Once upon a time, quite recently in fact, nobody was allowed to cruise. In fact, nobody was even allowed to travel and have holidays. Then, things got a little better and although cruising still wasn't allowed, taking a holiday on land was. Hurrah! That was when Cosmos phoned us and said, hey, we can't get you on a river cruise, but how about you come to Jersey with us? Jersey? That little island off the coast of France that's very British and at the same time not completely British? Or is it? We wanted to know more, and not having ever been, we were very excited to find out for ourselves what exactly Jersey was and why it was so popular. So we said a big loud yes and boarded a plane from a ghostly quiet, almost post-apocalyptic Gatwick airport to try out one of Cosmos's stay and explore adventures. Come with us and we'll show you everything in this montage and more. St. Helier is the beating heart of Jersey and at the heart of St. Helier is the Pomme d'Or Hotel where our stay and explore vacation with Cosmos is based. We've never stayed in a hotel with such a dark history and without delving in or stopping to study the old photos that decorate the walls, you'd never tell it was any more than a pretty four-star hotel built in 1837 with a great locality overlooking Liberation Square which is another massive clue as to its history. Prior to the dark times, Victor Hugo, France's most famous poet, playwright and novelist, who wrote, among other things, Les Miserables and The Hunchback of Notre Dame, stayed here in 1852. Nearly 90 years on, the Pomme d'Or became the headquarters for the German Navy when the Nazis occupied the island during the Second World War. More about the German occupation later, but as we all know, the Germans were defeated in 1945 and the Union Jack was raised on the balcony to mark the liberation of Jersey from German forces. Withstanding the onslaught of the generic hotel chains, the Pomme d'Or has thrived and is very much part of Jersey life and has been privately owned by the Seymour family since 1930, which now has the fifth generation working within the company. Judging by our beautiful room for the next five nights, they've not scrimped on the continuing investment. It looked brand new and was a delightful base from which to explore the island. St. Helier itself is as charming as the hotel. It has a population of around 38,000, roughly one third of the island's total, and is the capital of the island. This bustling multicultural harbour town is well known for its museums and attractions, reflecting both its seafaring history and its harrowing five-year occupation by the Nazis. We spent all afternoon walking exploring its cobble streets and miles of seafront. Liberation Square is right in the centre, so your hotel is never far from where you explore. There is evidence of Britishness of this island everywhere, but then its French influence kicks in strongly and you think you're in a little French village. It's such a quaint, almost impossible mix of French and British culture, and we love it. Given Jersey's special status within the UK, anything bought from a shop here is VAT free, meaning you can save up to 20% on goods rather than buying them in the UK. The town was quiet because tourism was still blighted by the lack of travel for most of the world, 
but that made it a very pleasant walk through the handsome buildings and numerous statues. The humble toad is the national symbol of Jersey. <laughs> There were reminders of the island's past struggles built into the pavement as you walked around, and we stopped to admire the town's war memorial. Head towards the coastline, and there's even more to explore. The harbour has exploded in recent years with residential quayside buildings and hotels, and a stroll along the harbour wall is a must, where you get a great view of Elizabeth Castle, the fortress located just off the coast and accessible by foot during low tide. And by a weird amphibious bus if you forget the time and get stranded. The next morning we were treated to something we hadn't seen in a very long time, a buffet breakfast, and we were soon planning our adventures to see more of the island. The beauty of doing this sort of trip with Cosmos rather than independently, because they'll always have their tour guide with you for the included excursions, and Julianne was absolutely brilliant. Such a laugh. After the obligatory temperature checks and a welcome video, we were soon in the coach for a tour of the island. It was a dull, grey, rainy day, so a guided tour was just the thing we needed to dodge those showers while seeing some of the unique features of this fascinating place. Here's some of the highlights. As you can see, the weather was not on our side, but we had a really full day and decided that night to go out for a curry. So tonight we are dining on our own and we're going to Jaipur, an Indian restaurant literally down the road. Let's go in. Mm. That's 
very nice in here. Very yeah, nice indeed. Nice We've got a lamb, danzag, what's that? Vegetable de piazza. Vegetable de piazza, garlic naan, pillow okay. rice, sagdal, sag and the and remains of our pickle. <laughs> Whoa. Day three continued with the ideal weather for toads, giving us even less sunlight and even more rain, but luckily the Pomme d'Or has this gorgeous little cafe, so we loaded up with our favourite beverages and considered our next, likely wet, move. We had a free day, so no organised excursions, and like the mad fools we are, decided to walk as far as we could and get as soaked through as we could. Well, why not? We've been wet before, we live in England. We decided to start the day with a quick walk to the stunning indoor market, for some souvenir shopping and a general look around. With the rain persisting and putting pay to our plans to visit Jersey Zoo, we decided to try out the local buses and hitched a ride to the other end of the bay to St Auburn, six kilometres away, but a very straightforward drive along the beautiful promenade that gently hugs the huge bay all the way. So we're on the bus to St Auburn really really easy you just literally get on wave your card in front of the machine pay you two pounds doesn't matter where you're going it's two quid for anything anywhere on the island so you just come on board pay two pounds he doesn't even ask where you're going brilliant see you in st Auburn. we reached st Auburn, and what a gorgeous little village it was even in the gloomy light and the persistent rain the St. Brillard Parish Hall used to be a train station when Jersey had its own railway in Victorian times. Some of the town's Victorian houses are incredibly well preserved. Even in this weather, you can't fail to fall in love with the little steep twisting lanes and narrow roads. Thank the Lord for waterproof camera gear. Cold, wet and with aching feet, it was soon time for the long walk back, which was broken into almost exactly two halves as we stopped by the world-famous St Matthew's Church, dubbed the Glass Church. Unassuming from the outside, go in and its true glassy uniqueness is revealed. The church is full of one-off, original Lalique glass panels and even a glass font. church dates back to 1840, when it started life as an ordinary chapel of ease. Lady Trent, who was married to Jesse Boot, founder of Boots the Chemist, lived close to the church and holidayed in France, where she met René Lalique. In the 1930s, she commissioned the artist with some artwork to complete her refurbishment project of the church. The resulting glasswork is both original and unique. The moulds used were destroyed as the panels were completed, so there is nothing like this anywhere in the world. Well, I can think of somewhere with very familiar detailing. Silver Moon, cruise vans? Hmm, I can't imagine the insurance premiums on this place. Back on the promenade again, and we are constantly reminded of Jersey's wartime history, with German underground bunkers and gun placements randomly popping up within the sea wall. The beach in the bay itself used to be an airfield. From earlier military history, you'll see what are referred to as Conway's Towers, a fortified round tower of which there are about 22 dotted around the island and all built in the late 1700s. Low tide also reveals some fascinating features that are not, thankfully, always about war. Like this saltwater Lido pool, 
which is free to bathers and fills with fresh seawater every high tide for swimmers to enjoy. This even steps into it like a proper swimming pool. While I've been waffling, the weather actually got worse. Listen to this. Safely back in the hotel, we found just enough energy to dash out opposite to the Seafish Cafe off Liberation Square, a posh fish and chip restaurant recommended by our friend and fellow blogger Steph from Cruise with Amber. Thanks, Steph. We had a delicious meal here with a lovely crisp local beer. Just a thing for a couple of soggy, tired, achy and incredibly hungry explorers. Day three, done. The Lord be praised because the sun finally came out and so did the BBC, who wanted to film us having a holiday. Yes, back in the days of lockdowns and travel bans, we were the first tourists back on the island and thus we were of national televisual interest. We were filmed at the Jersey War Tunnels, a place of particular historic and distinctly disturbing interest. This included excursion included an exhibition inside the tunnels, which was utterly fascinating and more than a little scary. Not just because of the foreboding Nazi presence, but also these freaky mannequins which talked to you as you walked by. They reminded me of a kind of Doctor Who villain from the Eccleston Tenant era. If you're a Doctor Who fan, you'll know what I mean. I wouldn't want to be in here after closing time, I can tell you. There's far too much here to unpack in the time we have, so I've put together a small montage that hopefully gives you a little insight into this awful and extremely dark time for the people of Jersey. If you want to know more, we recommend a visit to really understand what went on here. You're up in the sky, I'll carry you home, home to the mountain leaves. And soon, my friend, you'll see
Just like the weather for this trip, today was a day of downs and then ups, as we left the harrowing tunnels and with the sun shining, visited a vineyard for a tour, wine tasting and afternoon tea. Jersey is such an island of contrasts, and today couldn't have been more reflective of that. The Le Maire Wine Estate visit is included in the Stay and Explore package, and for us, it was definitely a highlight. Although that could have just been the euphoria of the sun being out. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. It was a really good excursion of an estate that not only produces some delicious wines, but they also hand make spirits, liqueurs, ciders, preserves, chocolates and biscuits, all on the estate including the famous Jersey Black Butter. Something I'd never thought I'd appreciate because the name is a bit off-putting, but never judge a book by its cover, or even a condiment by its jar label. It's utterly delicious. The weather even enabled a relaxing and scrumptious afternoon tea on the lawn next to the vines, followed by a quick browse around the shop and a nose around the gardens. That evening, again, we nipped out to a little restaurant a stone's throw away for a well-earned pizza and parmesan fries. Mm. And despite Covid, the whole area was bustling and most of the restaurants were full. And we felt almost a euphoric sense of normality. And it felt good. Very good. Day five was sadly our final full day and the good weather had decided to stay with us, so we had a stroll around the east side of town, where we discovered another seawater Lido pool, this time a much more developed construction. Originally built in 1895 and added to in the 1920s and 30s with an abundance of fabulous Art Deco features. This time the tide was in and you could only see the edges as the whole thing was submersed. The Victorians had some pretty cool ideas, didn't they? Thankfully, the sun continued to shine for our coastal cruise along the southwest peninsula of the island to Corbiere Lighthouse and back. Although we had stopped at most of the tourist hotspots along this coastline early in the week, it was wonderful to see them from the sea. Unfortunately, we didn't see any dolphins on our trip, but the crew assured us they are a regular feature on their coastal cruises. the sea, you really do notice the impact the Nazis had on their brief occupation here. Jersey was the only piece of British land that the Germans managed to capture and occupy during the Second World War and they made the most of it, hoping to turn the whole island into a militarised fort as a show of Nazi strength. Thankfully, eventually things didn't turn out that way for them and the island since is a peaceful haven for the lucky few who live here. It also attracts the wealthy few, who like to occupy the island with slightly different architectural ambitions than the more aggressive invaders of the past. And from our watery vantage point you could see the coastline was absolutely alive with people enjoying the water. The islanders here are born and bred to love the sea and it looks like they make the most of every minute of the good weather. Returning by lunchtime and with the weather sunny and ambient, we caught a bus along the coast road out to Le Hoc. The tide was out, so we walked along the beach for a few kilometres to the next village of Le Roc. Le Hoc? Le Roc? <laughs> One of the reasons Jersey is so unique is the staggering tidal system, as mentioned before. When fully out, the coastline takes on an otherworldly appearance, and a mystical lunar landscape appears before your very eyes. This natural phenomena is also why the island has been so hard to invade over the centuries. 
ships would find this shallow terrain impossible to navigate, even in high tide, and most would be dashed on the rocks before they got anywhere near the shore. I was gobsmacked by this landscape and I could have sat here for hours taking it all in. However, our time on Jersey was drawing to a close and we had plans for our last evening. We had saved this restaurant until last, having heard some wonderful reviews of it. Keyside Seafood Restaurant was a short walk across the square from our hotel and was renowned for its delicious locally caught seafood dishes. We decided to push the boat out for our last evening and ordered a nice cold bottle of white wine with a plate of local oysters to start with. The main course was just as wonderful with both of us choosing local fish dishes and this seafood risotto is still the most tasty risotto I've ever had. When I eat a lot of risotto, Oh, just looking at it, I can taste it now. And that's Jersey, and I didn't even mention Bergerac once. Damn, I just did. There was so much more to explore here than we had time for. Maybe we should have done a back-to-back, -back. or perhaps Cosmos could offer it and call it Stay More and Explore More. We will definitely be back, perhaps even with time to pop into the museum to see the Bergerac exhibition. But we may not have time. Perhaps they should justifiably have a new marketing slogan. There's more to Jersey than Bergerac. Much more. There. Jersey, my fee is in the post. <laughs>